turn with us tonight to the book of Judges, chapter number 6, and verse number 11. Judges, uh, chapter 6, verse number 11. And I'll be, uh, I'll be reading out of the uh, Living Translation tonight. King James Version. Easy now. <laughs> I saw those eyebrows starting to raise. I said, I guess I better go ahead and tell them which one. <laughs> Thank God for His Word. Judges 6 and 11, when you're there, say amen. amen. And there came an angel of the Lord and set under an oak, which was an Oprah, that pertained unto Joash the Abazarite. And his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why? Why then is all this befallen us? And where be all His miracles which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, that thou shalt save Israel from the hands of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee. Have not I sent thee. Oh, if we could just let that word sink into our spirit tonight. If we could just understand what God is trying to speak to us through the story here of Gideon. Oh, Father, I believe it would change every one of our lives. I want to preach for just a few moments tonight the Lord has helped me. The Holy Ghost has anointed me. I want to preach to us tonight on who God looks for in times like these. Who God looks for in times like these. Would you slip up your hand to heaven and would you help me pray tonight? Let's pray all across this tabernacle. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we love you. Lord, we praise you. We give you the honor. We give you the glory. We worship your holy name. God, I can do nothing without you, O oh Lord. I can do nothing without you. But through you, I can do all things. And I pray tonight, let your word go forth. Let the word of God have free course in this house. Lord Jesus, I ask you, Lord, bring your soul into captivity. Bring your soul into captivity into the obedience to Christ. Let not minds wonder, but let hearts, God, be absolutely focused like a razor beam of what God would say to our spirits in this house. Don't let anybody leave the same way that they come. But let your perfect will be done. And we give you praise and honor and Glory, praise the name of the Lord. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Would you shake somebody's hand, maybe two or three before you see it, and tell them you're glad to see them. There's some visitors. Just make them feel right at home, church. Amen. Amen. Brother Schaefer coming all the way down to Roanoke. Amen. Dear friend of ours. Beloved, no doubt we are living in some of the most precarious and backward days that we have ever, ever seen. Ever seen as a nation, ever seen as a people. I've said it before, but it bears repeating. I believe that we are living in the days that Isaiah prophesied about when he said they'll call bitter water sweet and sweet water bitter. They'll call things that are good evil and things that are evil good. We're living in a day to day where spotted owls have more rights than unborn children. Something is wrong. We're living in days that are backwards, friend. We're living in days that now, I mean, uh, integrity and character are no longer what makes a leader a leader so long as he has smooth words and so long as he can make crafts prosper, then we'll put him up as our leader. It should not be so, dear friend. We are living in days that are absolutely back 
backwards and everything seems to be upside down. This one man said it seems as if the inmates are running the asylum now. It seems as if people that have no truth in God at all are trying to tell us what God said. If there ever was a day that we put our ear into heaven and our noses back in the Word of God, it should be today. It should be the hour that we're living. It should be the time that we're in. It should be now. It should be days just like this. If you don't believe we're living in backwards days, not too long ago I just read a report how old there was a lady. I don't know. I mean, some think it's humorous. Some think it's crazy. But there was a lady, and she was in a department store, TJ Maxx. And there was a young boy that's running through the aisles of that store. And that young boy runs into that woman and knocks that woman down. Well, she turns around and sues that department store for $1 million. The crazy thing was, the boy that ran into her was her own son. Say, <laughs> man, something's wrong. Wrong, dear friend. I said something is wrong. Men have turned judgment backwards. Men don't hold truth in esteem any longer. Same report said of a man that walked into a convenience store and then pulled a gun on the man behind the counter. And the man behind the counter was quicker on the draw. It's probably somewhere around South Virginia, say man. Quicker on the draw and shot that shot that would-be robber back. Only problem was that would-be robber sued the owner of that convenience store for discrimination of his rights. Something is backwards, friend. Something is absolutely backwards. The problem that we can fall into today, the dilemma and the tragedy, if we're not careful, is you and I will look at days like this and we'll begin to say man has gone too far and God will no longer deal with us. Man has went too far and there's no help for the church. Say man, I want to remind you something friend, before you throw in the towel, before you raise up your hands and give up, I want to remind you what the psalmist said, Psalm 119 and 126, it is time for thee Lord, to work before they have made void thou, not before, but now, not then, but now, when men make void the law of God, God begins to work again. If we're not careful, even as a movement, Brother Schaefer, We'll start saying, there's no hope. There's no such thing as men getting delivered. And there's no such thing as hearts being turned around. Friend, I want to tell you tonight, the Bible did not say when the enemy came in like a little drip, the Lord will raise up a standard. It did not say when the enemy came in like a little trickle. But it did say when the enemy comes in like a flood, like a flood. That's where we are. That's where we are. When the enemy's coming in like a but now's the time where God says it's in days that are just like this and I'll raise up me and I'll put my anointing on hearts. I'll put my anointing on lives and I will use same Somebody said, somebody said, God, God's given up on man. I said, you wait one second. As long as he's raising up preachers like this, as long as he's still putting his hand on young men, don't tell me God's given up on man. If God's given up on man, he wouldn't be calling preachers anymore. If God's given up on man, he wouldn't be having ministers that stand behind the pulpit Sunday after Sunday and preach the truth of God's Word. There's still hope in days like this. It was in the dark days of Catholicism that God raises up a little man by the name of Martin Luther. It was in the days where men had turned the liberty of the gospel into a license to sin and construed it and contorted it and twisted it 
to make it become something that it wasn't. That in that dark day, God looked down and breathed upon a man by the name of John Wesley. And he began to preach the message of sanctification. And revival came. Can I tell you, beloved, if you think these days were darker than those days, you better guess again. Those were dark, dark days. And if God is big enough to move in, well, my God is still big enough. Oh, my God, he's still big enough to move right here when everybody in your community is wanting to compromise, when everybody in your church is wanting to draw cold. There is still a God that wants to say, I can touch him. I can send revival. I can help us. It's in days like this. Say, man. It was in a time. For Israelite, Israel had forsaken the God of their fathers. Sound familiar? And the Midianites infiltrated that land. And it was for one reason. Because everybody was doing that which was right in their own eyes. Interesting point. It didn't say everybody was doing wrong in their own eyes. I mean, everybody was doing right in their own eyes. If you'd have asked them, they'd have said, it's right. If they'd have asked them, you'd have said, they'd have said, ain't nothing wrong with it. I mean, everybody's doing it. Church down the road's doing it. Preacher's wife is doing it now. Must be legal. Must be right. And they had forsaken the God of the Word of God. And in the midst, Sister Yates, in the midst of that dark time, God looks down, church, and he finds a man. Do you still believe that God looks through the pews and looks into the hearts of men and women inside of this tabernacle? I believe that it does. I thank God for the ministry of an evangelist. But you know what, beloved? You've got enough prayer warriors right here that you can see soul after soul saved in this community. You've got enough band of believers to believe God for healing after healing. If only hearts would say, God, it's in times like this that you walk. And God looks down by the green and he sees not a great big man, not a man with 500 degrees after his name, not a man that's got more money than he knows what to do with, not a man that comes from a great big family. He said he's from that tribe of Ephraim of Manasseh, and he's the least in his father's house. In other words, he said, man, I'm the run of the litter. And we wasn't too big to start with. Can I tell you, beloved, it ain't a degree that God's looking for. I'm not against education, but I'm telling you, it ain't a degree that God's looking for. It ain't how much money it got in the bank. It ain't even what your last name is. But it's a heart that's open and a heart that's available and a heart that's willing and a heart that's hungry to say, Jesus, if you can use anything, my God, use me. If you can move through a life, I am available. If you can touch through a soul, let me give myself to you. And it's there, Brother Johnson, that he finds a man by the name of Gideon. In Judges 6 and 12. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Here is an ordinary man that has an extraordinary encounter with God. Who does God look for in times like these, Brother Zane? I tell you who God looks for. You hear me? God looks for a person of vision. That's who God looks for. A person of vision. This is a man that had to take his vision off of the Midianites and put his vision back on the Lord. Say amen to me, somebody. He sees the Lord, albeit through the angel, the angel representing God. But Oh, he turns his eyes off of the enemy and puts them back on the Savior. Who does God use and look for in times like these? He looks for men 
that will get their eyes off of every other church that is backslid and every other church that is compromised and every other hypocrite that is in the church and start putting their eyes on those that have still got the fire. Say amen if all you're ever doing is pointing a bony finger at who ain't got it. You're in the next on the list. Say amen. It's time you turn your eyes back to the Father. I'm talking to somebody tonight. I know that person may be backslid, but it ain't got to mean you got to backslide. If you look unto the Savior, you can have the victory. Oh, my brothers and Oh, my and Everybody's cold. Everybody's cold. Everybody's lost. You talk for yourself, honey. You weren't here the other night. I said you weren't here when God started setting free. You weren't in this meeting when God started saving. Hey, don't tell me God can't save in the 21st century. You come too late. Hallelujah to God. I refuse to put my eyes on every negative gainsayer. I refuse to look at every Everybody that says God can't. If all you do is focus on the hypocrite, you put it down, you'll be the next on the list. There comes a time where you say, I'm not going to focus on who's not and who was. And who isn't anymore. I'm going to focus on what God is doing. And how God is helping the church. And what I can do to be a part of what God is doing. Hallelujah. Say amen. What you put your focus on. You will become like. I've said it before. What you behold. You become. What you study. What you really focus in on and stay on, you'll start conforming to. Be patient, but that's a two-edged sword. How's there in Sudan? We, we got off that little dirt landing strip, got that little jeep, and we're going up to that base camp. And there's a couple of ladies that start walking across the road in front of us. But by the powers, they don't, they don't walk naturally, gracefully, like a lady would naturally walk. When those two or three ladies crossed that road, they buckled their neck like an old cow would. I looked at the preacher beside me, Brother Mike, and I said, uh, you know what that is? He said, I know what that is. You know what that is? I said, I'll tell you what I think that is. I'm not saying they're Hindu, but all I am telling you is those ladies, you mark it down, somewhere in their religion, they worship that cattle. Somewhere in their religion, they have kept their eyes focused on that beast for so long that they began to take on the very characteristics of what they've allowed their eyes to see. God help some of your hearts tonight. If you watch the trash that comes across a television, no wonder you just like it. If you let your eyes feast on the field of some internet site, no wonder you begin to manifest it. You cannot help what you begin to see. You will begin to act like. You will begin to take hold. You will begin to accept as yourself. But if you turn your eyes on Jesus Christ, oh my God, if you look for Jesus, if you keep your eyes on Jesus, there's going to be love. There's going to be joy. There's going to be peace. There's going to be meekness. Say amen. I'm looking unto Jesus, the author. I asked the young man, he was talking to me. He got talking about missions, go figure, huh? He said, Brother Zane, he was, he's studying up on a tribe in India. He said, when they're young, when they're boys, I mean 13, 14 year old boys, really want to become men, they want to go ahead and take a step up. They go to the elders. Those elders get a razor-sharp rock. They begin to cut 
in those boys' back over and over again, little one to two inch cuts, but kind of in an oval shape. And then they'd take mud and smear it all in that back just as they and get that thing good and infected. They said those boys would sit on their, lay on their belly for about three days, scream in agony. Finally, when it began to heal, those scars would begin to elevate ever so softly on their back and raise up. And they said it would look just like the back of a crocodile. And I looked at that young man. I said, uh, perhaps, perchance, does that tribe worship crocodiles? He said, well, yeah, Brother Zane. How would you know that? It's easy, son. You always become what you behold. You you, you let Brittany, what's her face, stay in your face long enough. And you want to act like her. You want to dress like her. You want to talk like her and walk like her. You let the filth of this. You let Madison Avenue pass before your eyes over and over again. You're going to think their style is God's style. And honey, you got another thing coming. It's time you turn your eyes back to the city. Oh, my God. It's time you turn your eyes back on Jesus and say, Lord, I want to keep my heart focused on the Lord. I just wish God would speak to me like he did Gideon. What? You see this book? Gideon never had it. He never had in sun dry times prophets of old speaking to him. He never had in the last days being spoken to by that son. You know, when I was a younger preacher, oh, go ahead and tell you this, some of you lose confidence in me. I'd come across situations, Brother Bill, I'd say, call up a preacher, an older preacher. I'd say, uh, what do you think I ought to do about such and such? And that older preacher would tell me, I think you ought to pray about it. Let me just have a little open moment with you right here. And don't get too sanctified on me, because some of you have done the same thing. That is not what I necessarily wanted to hear within myself. You know what? You know what I wanted. Here's what I wanted. Here's step one. Here's step two. Here's step three. Okay. And if those three, if those three steps don't work, well, here's plan B. And if plan B doesn't work, if you'll just mix point A and point B together and take out, uh, then you can know, friend, there are some situations that are so intricate and so interwoven that unless God comes in, you're going to mess it up. You better turn your eyes to the Lord. Who's God going to use in days like this? Men that will get their eyes off the negativity and put their eyes back on God. Hey, beloved, rule one before you ever go into battle. Take your eyes off the foe and put your eyes on the Father. Before you ever face your foe, face the Father. Who does God use, Brother Zane, in days like this? Men of vision, men of valor, bravery. Judges 7 and 2, and the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into thy hand. This is a vault themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand that saved me. Now, therefore, go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And there returned of the people twenty and two thousand, and there remained ten thousand. Get the picture. You're not sleeping on me yet, are you? Here's old Gideon. Hey, how many of y'all run Sunday? Oh, 32,000. <laughs> you know, 
Oh, Gideon walks in the church. Looks over Sunday school superintendent. He says, uh, uh, how, many, how many do we have in Sunday school? Carry the one. Uh, 32, 32,000. Woo, that's pretty good. What's Sunday school offering? $13.22. Amen. I'll just do that in there for free. You know what I'm saying without me saying. And here's the message. Gideon gets up there on Sunday morning, looks across the crowd, says, uh, uh, um, Appreciate everybody. Appreciate everybody being in the house of the Lord with us. Appreciate. Uh, appreciate this. This. Appreciate this good crowd coming out on. A, appreciate this good crowd coming out on Sunday morning. And uh, uh, um, uh, the Lord. Uh, the Lord's dealt me. The Lord's dealt. The Lord's dealt me to. Uh, the Lord's dealt me to talk to you this morning. And uh, title. <clears throat> title of my message this morning is. Uh, if you are lily livered sissy pants, go home. And all, give me a little bit of liberty here tonight. And all of a sudden, this is what the often getting here. And the dust of twenty two thousand men. Fly in that air. <laughs> He's left with 10,000 people. I'm not an old man. I'm really not. But I'm almost old enough to be able to tell folks, I didn't get in this thing just yesterday. You know, you just feel like, you know, you just feel like you've been there, done that when you can say that. You know what I'm saying? So if I can just kind of reach a few days into the future and say I didn't get into this thing just yesterday, if I know people like I think I know people, let me tell you what probably happened. Because here, here's how it is. Here's, here's what, here's the, and I understand there's exceptions to the rule. I understand there's exceptions to the rule. But here's how it normally happens. <clears throat> uh, Pastor, we love, we love your preaching. We love, we love your family. We love, we love your singing. Oh, we love it. I'll tell you what, this is the friendliest church we've ever been to. But God, you know, it's always God. I mean, they ain't heard from God in eight years. All of a sudden, God's talking to them in an audible voice at three in the morning. But God has told us that we need to go down the road. And then, and then when they get down the road, and somebody says, well, why'd y'all leave? It's that preacher. You ain't never seen a family like his. Every last one of them down there is me and snakes. We did everything we could to stay, but he told us it was time for us to go. And you just don't know, because you know as good as I do, they don't want to say what they said to that preacher. Say amen. And if I know those 22,000 men like I think I know them, you reckon they looked at each other? You reckon they said, hey, are you just as much of a scaredy cat sissy as what I am? Because all I know is I'm shaking in my boots and I've bit my fingernails down to the nub and I'm scared to death to fight those Midianites. And, you know, I didn't get finished crocheting back home, so I'll just go back and finish. You know what I'm saying? Come on here. You know as good as I do. That ain't what they said. You know as good as I do. They had to come on here. They had to look at that man and say, well, if it wasn't for that Gideon always trying to take the credit, we'd have been right beside him. Let me tell you something, brother. It wasn't the music while they left. It wasn't the preaching while they left, per se. But when that preacher said, it's time, Daddy, you make a stand for holiness. It's time, Mama, you come on up. It's time you tell that daughter, she ain't getting on that cheerleading squad, getting out there in the Skirt for some pervert to lust all after her. And man, come on. Don't 
you back up on the end. I'm telling somebody, it takes a boldness. It takes a backbone. It takes some courage to stand up for righteousness, to stand up for truth. We need men that to stand and preach and pray and live to say, man. It takes real men to love that family enough to say, we're not going down that movie theater. That'd be the last day. That'd be the last day that the shortest shorts are found in this house. Say amen. I'm going to be like that one woman. She came up to me and she said, Brother Zane, God has convicted me of all my all of my immodest apparel. And I'm telling you what, I have got rid of all of it except one pair. And then she looked at me and said, just in case. Just in case what? Just to come over here. Just in case your mom and dad look at you and say you went too far. Just in case you talk to somebody that used to live like that and now you're convicting them and they don't want you to live like that. What else do you think's going to happen? You better believe the devil's going to try it. We need men with a backbone. Hallelujah. We need men that are stand with a backbone and say, I'm living this way. I love this way. It's right. It's true. It's God's way. Somebody praise the Lord. Say, man. It's right. It's right. It's the Bible. Hallelujah. God going to use in days like this, Brother Paul, and that love their family enough to lay down the line and say, I love you enough to keep you from an ungodly world. Mama, if your holiness convictions ain't good enough to pass on to your children, they ain't evidently good enough for you. I'm tell you, I just let me camp out here for one second. I've seen mamas live their desires through their children. And they ain't gonna do it. They ain't gonna get close to it. I mean, son, they run 150 miles away from it. But when Junior and Sally says so, it's it's really just. A Personal conviction. Let me tell you something. There are such things as personal convictions. There are true personal convictions. But when it's in the Bible, it's not a personal conviction. It's a biblical conviction. And you don't have to have God wake you up at two in the cold morning and shake you out of bed. You don't have to have a tingle go down your back. It's in the Word of God. It's in the Word of God. It's in the Word of God. Some, Mark, some in this church could do so much more for God than what you're doing. But let me tell you why you're not. You're afraid. There's fear in your heart. You stop me if I ain't telling you the truth. Faith sets you up for trial. Fear sets you up for failure. I've said this till it's threadbare, but I'll say it again here. What faith is to God, I promise you, fear is to the devil. And just how God works through faith, the devil works through God. Give us men of vision. Give us men of power. God, give us men of vigilance, of carefulness. Judges 7 and 4, And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many. 
Bring them down into the water, and I will try them for thee there. And it shall be that of whom of whom I say unto thee, this shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And whosoever I say unto thee, this shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. So he brought down the people into the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, Everyone that lappeth of the water with his tongue as a dog lappeth, him shalt thou set by himself. Likewise, everyone that boweth down upon his knees to drink, and the number of them that lap put in their hands to the mouth were three hundred men. And the rest of the people, 9,700, mind you, and the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. God's looking at him, power, brother Powers, and he's saying, no, no, no. I've still got to thin out your ranks. Here's what I want you to do. You know the story, but let me tell it. It just feels good up here, so let me say it. Go down to that water brook. There's going to be two classifications of people that drink up there. Number one, I'm kind of doing it backwards here, but number one, there's going to be men that put their belly in the mud and their snout in the water and drink that water. And on the other hand, there's going to be somebody that bends down, scoops that water up with his hand, and laps it like a dog. Mind you, church, mind you, the Midianites, just over on that hill over there. Brother Paul, what would it have been if those Midianites had just glanced over that hill and seen every last one of those Israelis down on their face, not watching, not vigilant? Boy! Look over. One. There's 300 men, Brother Green. 300 men that says, thank God for a brave heart. But God, it ain't just about how bold I can be. God, give your servant wisdom. God will not, cannot, God cannot use the coward. But God will not use the careless. Time out one second. Young people, can I just stop and talk to you for one second? I've seen young people, and they was bold as a lion for God, but they were very, very careless about who they chose as a spouse, as a husband or a wife. I'm not saying they didn't have boldness. So I didn't say they couldn't preach like a house of fire, but they were very, very careless. People would try to speak to him and tell him, you don't want to go down that road. And the mind was already in that direction. And they weren't watching out. God, give us young men that are bold. But, oh, God, give us young hearts that are wise, Lord, and to listen to wise counsel, and to understand the fear of the Lord. Listen, that doesn't stop with the youth group. We need moms and dads that are wise in their heart. ask you a question here. If road A and road B will get you to the same place and for whatever reason road A makes you fall by the wayside you think it would be smart to start traveling down road B? The wise thing to do. The Bible didn't say, Lord, get us as close to temptation as possible. And let us prove how bold we are for you. Lead us not into temptation. Lead us not into temptation. How's there in Ecuador? And we're on that big bus. And I mean, son, we're on the edge of a cliff. You hear me? And for whatever reason, Brother Prescott, that bus driver thought it'd be macho or hero to see how close to the edge he could get us without falling off that cliff. I looked at that man and said, that ain't funny. I said, that ain't funny. Let me tell you something, friend. God does not laugh when you see how close to the edge you can put it and think you can get up on a platform. God does not laugh when you see how close to the world you can get and still think you're sanctified. Henry 
Ford. One time owner, CEO there, Ford Motor Company. Whenever he would hire a new employee, Brother Johnson, he would take that man out and he'd have a list of questions for that man. He'd go down and he'd ask that man questions as that man would begin to eat his food and mark things, yes, no, no, no. no. But here's the deal. The questions didn't matter. It was all a farce. Here's what, here's what Henry Ford was looking for. If that man salted his food before he ever tasted his food, Henry Ford said he's not a thinking man. He just does it by habit. I can't use a man like that on my team. I'm not pre- hey, quit elbowing your husbands. I'm not preaching against you. What he preached on that, he preached on you. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't preaching against you. What I'm telling you, what I'm telling you is the Bible says, he that's faithful in a few things will be faithful in many. He that's unfaithful in a few things, unfaithful in many. I got to close. I got to close. Rosane, why have you got to close? Well, I usually close for two reasons. I'm out of steam and I'm out of stuff. You know what I'm saying? That's usually why I close. Sometimes I've, sometimes I've been out of stuff before I'm out of steam and I get in trouble. <laughs> Amen. Who does God use in times like these? Men, men of vision, men of valor, men of vigilance, men of vitality and inner strength. Listen to God's Word tonight. Don't, don't let your mind wander. Listen to God's Word. Seven and nine of Judges, and it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Rise, get thee down into the host, for I have delivered into thy hand. You go ahead and drop down to verse 13. And when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow and said, Behold, I dreamed a dream. And lo, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the host of Midian, and it came into a tent and smote it that it fell and overturned it that the tent lay along. And his fellow answered and said, and then he put this in emphasis, this is nothing else save the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel, for into the hand of God he hath delivered Midian and all the host. Get the picture. Get the picture. God tells Gideon, go on down to that camp of the Midianites and Amalekites and just take for her, take, take your servant for her. Just kind of ease drop on in there. And I, I can't fully explain it, but somehow, somehow or another, old Gideon kind of gets in there and bows down, if you will, and Peeks through the marsh, bends his ear. Them old boys is around that campfire. One of them says, "Man, I had a dream last night." What did you dream? You don't wanna. You don't wanna. No, go ahead, tell. Go tell me what did you dream. I, I dream. I dreamed there was this huge cake of barley bread. And it tumbles down the hill. And it knocks over every last one of our tents. And the guy looks at me and he says, You, you drink what? He tells him, You know what that is? You know what that is? That's Gideon. That's Gideon coming down the hill. That's Gideon mowing us down like a blade of grass. That's, it's a, hey, guys, get over here. Listen to what this man dreamed. It spreads through the camp like wildfire. Now, you got to understand something. Well, Smith, barley bread was the cheapest, roughest bread that they could make. Barley bread was the bread that they fed their animals. And Gideon is saying, oh God, God, you don't understand. I ain't nothing. I ain't nothing. God, I'm as worthless as a piece of barley bread. But listen, friend, Judges 6 and 34, but the Spirit 
of the Lord came upon Gideon. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, God, you don't understand. I ain't smart enough. I ain't quick enough. I ain't fast enough. I don't know enough folks, and Daddy ain't got enough money. Mama didn't send me to the proper school, and we weren't born on the right side of the track. But the Spirit of God said, Boy, I can use you. I can touch you. I can minister through your life. Help me, God. Help me, God. Help me. You see that coat? See that jacket? You ain't never seen a jacket like this in all your life. This, this is the most amazing jacket. You ain't never seen one like this in all your life. See if I can still do this on. Jacket, stand up straight. Ooh. Keep the faith, brother. Hold on. Don't, don't back up on me yet. Uh-oh. Uh, okay. Uh, jacket, raise your arms, Joe. Oh, I'm doing something. Hold on. Give me, hold on, hold on, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me try this one more time, just let me, let me hold on, just give me a shot, but just write me off yet, just, just hold on, wait, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this again, see if I, hold on, hold on, wait one second here, <laughs> let me, hold on. jacket, stand up straight, look at that, did you look at that, did you see that, did you see what that jacket just, jacket, raise your arm, arms, look at that, did you see what that jacket just did, you say, wait a second, brother Zane, that ain't the jacket, that's you inside of the jacket, that's what I'm saying, it ain't you, it ain't me, it's the Holy Ghost, Oh, my God. It's the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost. I can't do it on my own. I can't make it on my own. But if I get filled, if I get filled, if I get filled, it'll happen. Somebody pray there. Whatever I need this jacket to do, if I just get clothed in it, it will do it. I ain't asking. I ain't asking this jacket to do something I can't do. I feel the Holy Ghost right here. And God ain't asking you to do something He can't do. <laughs> My God, get me full of the Holy, Holy Ghost. Close me, God. Close me. It's time some of you get a fresh anointing. I said it's time some of you get a fresh and feel it. It's time some of you get filled with the Holy Ghost. Someone can help me on the piano, please. Whatever he needs you to do, if you'll just get full of him. Whatever he needs, right over here, church, right over here, I'm telling somebody, whatever he's asking you to do, you better believe on your own. You as worthless as a piece of barley bread. You ain't smart enough and fast enough. But he that is in me is still greater than he that's in this world. And he said, you shall receive power. You're going to receive power after that which the Holy Ghost has come. Come upon you. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon, literally in that Hebrew, clothed Gideon. I ain't got time to get in the whole story. 
takes those 300 men, Brother Green. Breaks them in three divisions of a hundred. He gives them a lamp. He gives them a light. And he gives them a trumpet. I don't have time to get in all of it. But he tells them, you blow that trumpet. You take that pitcher. You break that pitcher. You lift up that lamp. For in that trumpet represents boldness. That pitcher represents brokenness. And that light represents brightness. Brother Mike, God says tonight, if I can just get my hands upon a bold, broken, bright vessel, whatever I need them to do, they're able, sister. They're able. Stand with me all over this house tonight. Church, let's lift up our hands to heaven for just a moment and begin to praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, whatever you're asking me to do, I can't do it on my own. I can't do it on my own. But I'm asking you tonight to clothe me. I'm asking you tonight to fill me. I'm asking you tonight for a fresh anointing of the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody begin to praise him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's what I'll be willing to do. Oh, whatever. Ronda, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Close me, God. Baptize me, God. Let me put my eyes upon you. Let me put my heart upon you. Bless your name. Bless your name. I don't know what you walked in here with tonight. I don't know what your need is, but I do know what your answer is. It's to get full of God's sweet Holy Ghost. And He is the answer to every dilemma and every situation that we're faced with. Yes. And in times, Brother Johnson, just like this, God's eyes are still looking through pews. He's still looking in hearts and saying, let me find a man. Let me find a lady. Let me find a servant that will turn their eyes to me and let me touch them once again. I don't know what every need is in this house, but I know there are many. Can we step up from where we're standing right now and can we stand all across this front tonight? And can we ask God to touch us with a fresh anointing? Come on, all the way from the back and to the front. Can we lift up our hands to heaven and begin to pray? God, anoint me for the task. Anoint me for the mission. Anoint me for what's ahead. Anoint me for what's around the corner. Lord, have your way. 